Your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen. You're watching, yes, the Yankees Entertainment and Sports Network. Just a gorgeous Sunday here in New York where moms get their proper due. Boy, they do so much, so how about a little love on this very special day? And now it is time for baseball as the Yes Network presents the Hyundai Sunday Game of the Week. Today, it's the New York Yankees against the Tampa Bay Rays in the final game of a four-game set from Yankee Stadium in the Bronx, New York. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Yankees Baseball along with Paul O'Neill. I'm Michael K. Okay, what a performance yesterday by the Yankees. They were down 6 0 to one of the best pitchers in baseball, Shane McClanahan. They came all the way back, an inspiring victory. Right in the middle of it was their captain, Aaron Judge. Well, it's good to see Aaron Judge back in the lineup. And yeah, when you're down 6 0, you're going to need a couple big swings to get back in it. And in the fifth inning, they were still down by four. Aaron Judge, first home run off the IL, shoots one the other way. But in the sixth, the big one that put the Yankees. He's all the way back and ahead. Aaron Judge back in the lineup. His presence was felt yesterday. Oh, well, look how it's been felt since he's come back. Five games, the Yankees have won four of them. 7.6 runs per game, an average of 269 for the team. 11 home runs, an OPS of 883. So the Yankees are taking two of the three first games against the Rays, and the bullpen's been a big part of it. They use them a lot. So who's available today? Murdoch Morakovitz and Aaron Boone have more when we return on Yes. Against the Tampa Bay Rays. Hey everyone, I'm Meredith Morakovitz. The Yankees had yet another come from behind win yesterday, and Wandy Peralta picked up his second save in as many days. Now, Aaron Boone most likely will not have Wandy Peralta or Clay Holmes as options out of the bullpen today. Both those guys pitching back to back days. So earlier I asked Aaron Boone who he expects to go to in a high leverage situation. The good part about it is, is I feel like we have a lot of really good options, and obviously. Obviously, we've used uh, Michael King, you know, carefully here early in the season um, and using him in length. So there's been more often than not, there's a lot of days that he's been down. So that factors into things. Um, but really trying to get these guys in parts of the lineup uh, where we feel like they can be most successful. And, and Clay coming in and really doing a good job yesterday. I know he gave up the, the broken bat hit that led in the runs, but for him to get, be able to give us one plus and, you know, kind of force them into some pinch hit situations. So then Wandy's in a better situation against some of their lefties in that last inning, um, you know, at, at its best, those guys down there not only are really good, but also complement each other with different looks. One quick note on the lineup, Glaber Torres has the afternoon off. Aaron Boone said he is fine. He'll be an option off the bench. As a result, it's going to be Jake Bowers leading off for the Yanks this afternoon. Plenty more to come on the Yes Network. When we get back, Michael Kay will be joined by Paul O'Neill. First pitch coming your way after the break. Own every mile in a brand new Hyundai. By the New York Lottery, get out there and play. Please play responsibly. Must be 18 or over. And by NYU Langone Health, the number one hospital in the U.S. for neurology and neurosurgery. You really couldn't ask for a more beautiful day here at the stadium. There is really not a cloud in the sky. A lot of moms out there taking care of the kids, bringing them to the game. It's their day, and still they're doing that, so that's... That's really awesome as the Yankees take the field here in the Bronx. And a hearty happy Mother's Day from all of us here at Yes. So the Yankees take the field. We take a look at the uh, Rays starting lineup brought to you by TikTok. Yandy Diaz at first, Wanda Franco at short, and Brandon Lau is the second baseman hitting third. Cleaning up, left fielder Randy Rosarena, Josh Lowe on right, Taylor Walls at third. Bottom third of the order, the DH Luke Rally. It's Christian Bethencourt catching, batting eighth and batting ninth, and playing center field. It is Jose Siri. And that lineup is going to face that guy, Clark Schmidt, 
This will be his ninth start, one and three, five point three five, and you see his numbers: forty three strikeouts, thirty five in a third innings pitch. Paul, let's check out the Nissan pitcher scouting report. Well, he's going for three, two good back to back starts, and he's coming off his first win of the year on Tuesday against Oakland. And breaking balls for strikes, you've noticed in this series. Tampa Bay does not leave the strike zone a lot and they really hit the fastball well which has been Clark Schmidt's problem 395 off his sinker and cutter combined against hitters this year so five lefties well he's had trouble with left handed hitters 378 on the year Tampa Bay has stacked the lineup with five lefties today. Now let's check out the defense behind Clark Schmidt it's presented by Buick. Jake Bowers in left, Harrison Bader in center, Aaron Judge over and right in the infield, LeMayu, Volpe, Cabrera, and Rizzo. That's third to first. Trevino behind the plate, catching Clark Schmidt, and the DH for the Yankees today is Willie Calhoun. Paul, keys to the game, well, brought keep, to you by your local Kia dealers. Keep rolling. The offense has scored over six runs a game over the past 11 and a short pen. We talked about a little bit Peralta and Holmes probably out today, going back to back days. So what do you think? Maybe King, maybe Hamilton? We'll have to wait and see. And he's back. And it's fun to watch Aaron Judge two home runs yesterday. All of a sudden things seem a little bit better offensively with number nine in the lineup. Ninety nine. Let's look at the game time weather presented by Bigelow the official hot tea of the Yankees. Seventy two degrees. No chance of rain. Humidity twenty five percent wind is left to right. All right. All the business out of the way. Now it's time for baseball. Diaz ready. Schmidt's ready. Let's do it. Here in the Bronx, first pitch inside, and we are underway. Mike Molinsky behind the plate, the crew chief Alan Porter at first, Nate Tomlinson at second, Sean Barber is over at third. There's a strike, so let's take a look at the home plate umpire. Uh, he is considered hitter friendly, just barely, caused fewer inside strikes. Up and in. The Rays are 30 and 11. The Yankees are 23 and 18. Ground it and pass the diving LeMayu and down the left field line. On the warning track, Bowers fields and flips it in, so it's a leadoff double for Yandy Diaz. Well, Diaz has worn out that left field line this series. It's the second or third ball that he's gotten by DJ LeMayu. Down in the hot corner, and again during the day you don't pick up the ball as quick. Again, ball hooked down the line, leadoff double, and that extends his hitting streak to 12 straight. So quick trouble for Clark Schmidt. Here's Franco. Tap to Lemayhu. Makes the throw to first. Good base running there by Diaz as he advances to third. He waited until LeMahieu let go of the ball and there was nobody there, so he just scooted to third. Yeah, LeMahieu stalled a little bit and trying to give Schmidt an opportunity to get over there, but he was not able to. And uh, you're right, good base running by Diaz, just a fundamental play, kind of follow the ball. And really, Schmidt not able to get over there, probably not enough time anyway. And it looks like he hurt himself. I kind of slid on that bag, which is. What would you say rubberized plastic feels to it? Yeah, and you know you water the infield down uh, before the game. It can get on top of the base and you're right. He just spikes did not grab. They kind of slip. So he's going to stay in the game. He's at third base. Yankees yeah, bring the left side of the infield in. Second baseman Cabrera is back. Here's Brandon Lau swinging a miss. Boy, Lau had a good at bat the way that game ended yesterday. What was it, 10 or 11 pitches off Peralta after he broke the big 0 for streak? And the 10 pitch at bat ended up uh, going the Yankees' way with the fly out to Cabrera to end the game. One and two. Mm -hmm. 
Diaz leads off third. One two count on Lau. Lau broke an 0 for 25 with a pinch hit single in yesterday's game. Yesterday's game was was so fun. Mm -hmm. More fun for Yankee fans as they won 9 to 8. But these teams have played very close games. So they played six games in the last 10 days. And five of them have been decided by one run. Slow roller towards second. Run will score. Cabrera makes the play at first. An RBI for Lau. And it's one nothing Rays. Well, one run's not going to kill you. You want to stay away from the big inning. And after a leadoff double, a couple big outs here for Schmidt. And the toughest hitter in this lineup walking to the plate now, a Rosarena. He has had tremendous at bats in this series. Grounded to short. Volpe gets a Rosarena for the final out. One run, one hit. Nobody left on base. It's the Rays one. And the New York Yankees coming to bat. All the moms, a happy Mother's Day. Here we go with what the starting lineup is for today. Leading off, we have left fielder Jake Bowers. Number two, we have right fielder Aaron Judge. Batting third, we have Anthony Rizzo, right fielder. Batting fourth, we have DJ LeMayu on third base. Batting fifth, we have my son, center fielder, Harrison Bader. Batting sixth, we have Willie Calhoun, who is the designated hitter. Batting seventh, we have the shortstop, Anthony Volpe. Batting eighth, we have catcher, Jose Trevino. And batting ninth, we have second Bader, Oswald Cabrera. Have a great day. Let's go Yankees and happy Mother's Day to all the moms around. Yay! Thank you, Mrs. Bader. That is uh, Harrison's mom doing a great job with the starting lineup brought to you by TikTok. 1-0 Tampa Bay, bottom of the first inning. Diaz is, in fact, out of the game, replaced by Isak Paredes at first base. So slipping on uh, the bag. Might have pulled something. So there is Paredes. One and zero on Jake Bowers. Bowers has really looked good at the plate. Five for his last eleven in his last three games. Yeah, a couple of those outs were even hit hard. Michael line drive to right, line drive to left. Ball got nothing for it, but really, really good swings. All right, Zach Eflin gets a start for the Rays. This is his seventh start, 4 and 1, 2.91 ERA. His numbers are good. 2 1, 2 and 2. Strike three, Bowers down looking. All right, Paul, let's check out the Nissan Pitcher Scatter Report on Eflin. Well, he was a free agent pickup. He came over from Philly, where he signed a three-year, $40 million contract, which was the largest free agent contract ever for the Tampa Bay Rays to sign. And bye-bye four-seamer. They talked him to get away from the four-seamer. He's all sinker-cutter now. His pitch much better. Stay in the zone. Uh, his chase rate is 38%, which is second in baseball. Behind Joe Ryan, you've got to swing at strikes. Judge lost one to right field. Josh Lowe coming on makes the play. Two away. Let's check out the Rays defense presented by Buick. A Rosarena and left Siri in center. And Lowe is over and running infield. Walls, Franco, Lau, and Paredes. Beth and Court behind the plate catching Zach Eflin. Zach had a bruised right knee last year with the Phillies, so he missed a lot of time. Then when he came back, he pitched out of the bullpen. And actually pitched quite well out of the bullpen. 2.45 ERA in 17 games, including the run to the World Series. Became a free agent and uh, ended up signing with Tampa Bay. Gone off to a nice start. Pitched to Rizzo as a strike. Yankees are wearing pink socks today. Many of them are wearing pink spikes. You see Anthony Rizzo with a pink bat. 
Yeah, that'd be very hard for me, Michael. You get so used to looking at your bat, the way it is, the label, the way it's marked, just uh, for one day. Uh, I, I wouldn't mind taking batting practice, but it, it would be very strange uh, to use a different <laughs> piece of wood that you're not used to. I think a lot of people might feel like you because after they do it the first time, you see many of them return to their regular bat. Catcher's gear, obviously, for Bethancourt in pink, and both teams are wearing kind of grayish, light grayish hats with the logos outlined in pink. And even the umpire is getting in on it. Love it. Foul back. Check out Coors Light beating the pressure. Anthony Rizzo has certainly been doing that. All of his numbers are good. At home, 375. And that leads the American League. Seven homers and 15 ribbies here at the stadium. Swing and a foul tip into the glove of Bethancourt. Rizzo down on strikes. Yankees go down in order and we'll go to the second. Cast 3D by Google Cloud. Yeah, the big thing you see is the cutter really going down and you know, he just has to command his sinker. I mean, that's what he pitches off and his breaking ball. The cutter earlier in the year was a new pitch for him. He was getting hurt with it, and uh, you know he's kind of shied away from it. In the last couple starts, he's been much better. You know, it's so odd because during spring training, we were all trumpeting the cutter and how that's going to change the way pitches to lefties, but he almost used it too much and wasn't as effective as people thought. Doesn't mean it has to shelve it, but he can't use it exclusively. Yeah, when you look at a pitch, Michael, and you're talking about six, eight pitches in a count. It only takes one mistake to, you know, to give up a big hit or a home run, and that's what was happening. He would throw two or three good cutters and then leave one right out over the plate that would end up in the bleachers. So, good breaking ball there. That's the kind of swing you see at a good breaking ball. Well, I say this every Mother's Day, and uh, I will repeat it. Uh, if your mom, if you're lucky enough that your mom's still with us, thank her for everything she's done. Tell her you love her. And I can tell you from personal experience, if she wasn't there, you wish you'd have the opportunity to say it again. So thanks to all the moms and all they do. And thanks to uh, my wife, Jody, who is an unbelievable mom to Charlie and Kelly. Well, kind of ditto on that, Michael. I am lucky enough. I actually FaceTimed my mother today at 96 for her to be able to answer <laughs> a FaceTime. I was extremely impressed. And obviously all my kids were on the phone with my wife, Neville. So good day so far. One and two on walls. Swing and a miss. Two down. Two straight lefties retired, striking out. Yeah, good movement away with that sinker, down and away. And when you're thinking of curveball down and in, that ball sinking down and away will give you trouble. There's Luke Raley. Meredith, you want to send uh, happy Mother's Day wishes to your mom? I absolutely do. Mom, if you're listening, thank you so much for all the support over the years. I said in the pregame show, this is a woman who drove me all over creation, going to volleyball tournaments, basketball tournaments, uh, and always did it with a smile. So thank you for everything you did for me and continue to do for me and my brothers. We love you. Very nice. Happy Mother's Day, Kath. It sounds so professional, Meredith. Did you have that written down, or was that right off the cuff right there? Off the cuff, because I mean it. Nice. I sincerely mean it, and I wow. had the opportunity to catch up with her earlier today. Sent her a little gift last night, so I hope she's enjoying her day, and I can see her in person soon. Nice. A walk to Raleigh. I messed up today, Paul. You did. I got up really early. And I want to get breakfast to bring back and surprise Jody. You know, breakfast in bed sort yeah. of deal. I didn't tell the kids. <laughs> so it when I got you. back, the, the kitchen is torn up. They're, they're making their waffles <laughs> from scratch. And I was, ah. Oh, wow. I was not pleased. Well, they just, they trumped you. They, they made a homemade breakfast. Right. You were out there trying to just get an egg McMuffin or something. Pre pretty much a little <laughs> higher end, yeah. <laughs> 
0 and 1 on Beth and Court. No, now 0 and 2. Can Schmidt ring up three strikeouts here in the second? Rays lead 1 0. Well, Schmidt was taking two steps toward the Yankee dugout, thinking that was strike three. Hello. Ball, a little down, definitely got the plate, but too low. Swing and a miss. Three strikeouts here in the second. No runs, no hits, no errors, and one man left on base. We go to the bottom of the second inning. It's one nothing Tampa. And today's picture comes to us from Jennifer, who's celebrating Mother's Day with her mom. Very sweet. Happy Mother's Day. Use the hashtag Toyota Pinstripe Pride. Mention yes in pictures you post to social media. To reflect your love for the Bronx Bombers, we might spotlight you in a future game. one nothing, Tampa Bay over the Yanks, bottom of the second inning. DJ LeMahieu will lead it off. 12 game on Bay Street for LeMahieu. One and oh. Two and oh from Eflin. You know, one of the advantages for Eflin is that he's actually from Orlando and he really loved the idea of spending another six weeks at home during spring training rather than sign with a team where he would not be close to home. That one is looped into right field. It's Duncan in for a base hit. Well, when in doubt, if you're DJ LeMay, you stay inside the baseball. This ball is in off the plate. Watch him bring his hands inside, shoot it the other way. That's what a high average does. A, a, a hitter that is, has that ability. That's why he's got two batting titles. Here's Harrison Bader. We thank his mom for giving the, uh, the Yankee lineup today, Janice Bader. And there's a strike. I just don't see my mom being able to do that. I think she'd get stage fright. She just did FaceTime. She'd be fine. <laughs> At this point, <laughs> yeah. Back when I was playing, I just don't see her grabbing the mic <laughs> doing the lineup. I will tell you, 96 and doing FaceTime, that's impressive. It's amazing. Great. She will text the kids or text me and put little emojis in it and everything. That's she's awesome. Got, she's got it going on. Yeah. Popped up. Paredes makes the play for the first out. Now, Eflin, when he was pitching, this was in Tampa Bay, they made him remove his wedding ring. It means a lot to him. He always wears it. And it's a rubber ring, and they still made him wear it. So he ended up putting it on a chain and wore it around his neck, but the umpire said you got to take that off, even though it wasn't on mm -hmm. his right hand, it was on the glove hand, but they did not want it there. You got one of those rubber ones, right? Yeah, the, you know what they are? They're like uh, workout or CrossFit, because you know they, they won't catch a bar or mm -hmm. catch your finger. Makes it much more, much easier, but you know, that's kind of nitpicking. That's just trying to get under the skin of a pitcher, especially when it's in his glove hand. But, you know, you have the right to do it. Ah. 
Jimmy Fallon almost lost a finger because mm -hmm. he, he had a, a, a wedding ring on and fell in his kitchen. I guess he hit the counter yeah. and, and almost ripped his whole finger off. There's been a lot of people, and that's why these things are so convenient. Obviously, I have my original one, but uh, they're so convenient. The rubberized thing that you know you won't hurt yourself. 2-1. Calhoun fouls it off. 2-1-2. Two two. Oh, boy, right there. Calhoun, good swing. Straight back into the mask. Eflin deals. Chopped to first. Foul ball. Well, when you're hitting Mike, when you chop that ball down the line, you, you start to run down the line and you're trying to use your body movement to steer it foul. You, you get another swing here. Outside. Three and two on Calhoun. 13 starts for Calhoun. He's 11 for 33 in those starts. Has a couple of home runs, six ribbies. Corner goes. Strike three, throw to second. Strike him out, throw him out, double play as LeMayu is caught stealing. A strikeout of Calhoun will go to the third, one nothing Tampa Bay. Waiting on Carlos Rodani received a back injection Tuesday, followed by 48 hours of rest. He threw from 60 to 70 feet yesterday and today already. So the next move, I guess he's gonna get up on a mound and start to uh, inch closer to return it. And Michael, Aaron Boone doesn't have a date for exactly when Rodon will get on a mound, but the fact that after the cortisone shots, he's throwing again, I think it's a sign that he's moving in the right direction. And Siri hits one off the wall, fielded out there by Bauer. Siri's going for two. The throw is, gets by. It was on time, but it got by. So Siri reaches with a double. Yeah, with Siri's speed, this is a sure double, but I think he thought he had a home run out of the box. Kind of watching it. A good throw has him. The ball kind of comes up easily out at second base if you come up with the throw there. Pretty good throw by Bowers, too. And Meredith also, it seemed that uh, there's a possibility of next Sunday in, in Cincinnati we can see Luis Severino on the mound. The Yankees have not yet made a decision on what will be next for Luis Severino. They know Tuesday he's going to make his second rehab start, but in speaking with Severino, he said there's a, no circumstance where he wants to make another one. He wants to be back up here with the big club. They're still going to have to stretch him out a little bit, but I think first and foremost, they need to see if Severino gets through that start healthy. As long as he does, they then consider bringing him back here and finishing the process up here and getting Severino back in that, Sever that rotation. Guys, I don't have to tell you how huge that that would be and as far as Rodon is concerned I think you also need to note it's going to still be a ways away for Rodon he essentially needs to go through a full spring training and stretching himself out yeah once he gets on the mound you're looking at probably six weeks after that because that's why spring training is as long as it is to build pitchers up but Boone did not dismiss Severino starting Sunday in Cincinnati said it's a consideration so as, as Meredith said they, they need him to get through Tuesday healthy Get those two back, that rotation looks completely different. And Severino said, I don't know who I need to talk to. I will talk to everybody. I want to be back with this team. So he is certainly getting excited about that possibility.
Count one and two on Paredes. This is his first at bat. He took over for Yandy Diaz in the bottom of the first. Diaz slipped, moving to third base. Stayed in the game, scored a run, but then left the game at the end of the inning. And Michael, the Rays just announced groin for Diaz. He left with a, a groin incident coming off that base there. I'm curious, Meredith, also, uh, after the game, I say, any concern with the way Nestor Cortez has pitched the last two starts? You know what? I asked him about that because it has seemed several times this season, not just the last two. He gets to that fifth inning, fourth, fifth inning, and he starts losing steam a little bit. And he says physically he feels fine. He feels like he did last year where he should be. He doesn't necessarily feel fatigued on the mound in later innings, but for whatever reason, he's losing command in those innings. Now, he's always a guy that worked fast. I said, the pitch clock, does that have anything to do with it, the way you're working earlier in the game? And he said he didn't necessarily think so, but he addressed the fact that it's something Thing that needs to change as this season progresses. That was an excuse me single through the infield that will score Siri. And it's 2 nothing Rays. Kind of just reached out with the bat and tapped it up the middle for an RBI single. Yeah, still no outs. And again, you're right, Michael. Kind of almost a check swing. But put, it up, put the ball in play. You never know. It finds a hole. Hope you're not able to knock it down. Here is Wanda Franco, and there's a strike. <laughs> oh, and two. That one gets away as Paredes will advance to second. That's the problem with that breaking ball in the dirt. A lot of times you'll see this ball actually back up and then it ricochets off. Popped up. Giving a look is Trevino, but he runs out of room. Two rows deep. Two nothing Rays. Now the Rays are 24 and four when they score first. But three of the four losses were to the Yankees when they scored first. So Yankees, uh, Certainly don't give up when the Rays take an early lead. Yeah, you break down this week, you knew coming in, you know, you were going to have seven games against the Rays. Good pitch. Did not get the call. And you're three and three right now. And, you know, going into Tampa Bay last week, Michael, I'm sure you had to feel like, wow, this could be trouble. The Yankees weren't playing great baseball. The Rays were. All of a sudden, you get somewhat of a different feeling, especially from these last two wins that the Yankees had. So you you know you're seeing better things, and all of a sudden now you're starting to see some injuries creep up with Tampa. So you know maybe that's it's their turn to you know get hit by the injury bug for a while. Grounded to Oswaldo Cabrera. One away as Paredes moves to third. Well, the Rays who were on pace when the Yankees went into Tampa Bay to, to win about 130 games. Well, now they've lost four of their last five. They lost two or three to the Orioles. They've lost two of the first three to the Yankees. So we'll see how this one plays out. You know, one of the knocks against the Rays who were an excellent team was they played all the bad teams at the beginning of the schedule. That's no fault of theirs. But it was going to be interesting to see once the competition went up, rip foul, how they would perform. Well, they did take two out of three from the Yankees last weekend. All the games by one run. They could have swept the Yankees, and they could have easily have been swept. 
And then the games that they lost to the Orioles earlier in the week, also very close. Yankees have the infield in. They want to cut this run off. Oh, and two. Well, this is a difference of a, you know, a, a quality veteran pitcher. They know how to put guys away in this situation. Now you're 0 2, and if you're Clark Schmidt, you know, you're looking at a guy who has been struggling at the plate. Somehow, some way, you try to figure out how to get that swing and miss strikeout. Two and two. You see, that's the problem, Michael. You go from 0 2, and now you, you don't want to go to full count. So, you know, now you're in a position where almost like the momentum has changed. Now it's kind of on the hitter's side. Uh, you've gotten deep into the count. Fly ball center field. Bader getting in position, makes the catch. Tagging is Paredes. The long throw. Not in time. He got it all the way home from deep center, but a sack fly for Lau. It's three nothing Rays. And that'll bring up Rosarena. And let's check out the Genesis hitter scouting report. Well, he is a league leader now. Three hits yesterday has put him on top of the AL, hitting 329 in a big series. Five hits so far in this series, and then the six games overall. Hitting 409 off the Yankees. Not going to hit that one though. And be careful. Yeah, well, you better be careful after that. But when, he's a fastball hitter. He's hitting 347 with six home runs off the fastball this year. You know what I've noticed about a Rosarena? I mean, some of his antics after the home runs might rub some. You know, old time baseball fans the wrong way, even some players. Mm -hmm. But every ground ball we've seen him hit, he's flying down the first base trying to beat it out. Even just routine ground balls where his teammate, Juan DeFranco, will jog halfway to first base and stop. He is flying down the line. You got to give him credit. Yeah, he plays hard. No doubt about it. Great play the other night in left field. Good defensive player. Steals bases. I mean, he was a rookie of the year in the past. So, I mean, his talent is there. There's no doubt about it. And Michael he took Garrett Cole deep in this one and Cole was asked after the game about those antics after the home run and Cole just looked at the media contingent and said he does that all the time right. Yep. Predictable is what he said. Fly ball right field judge is there makes the play and that'll do it. But the Rays had two runs on two hits. Nobody left on base. We go to the bottom of the third three nothing Tampa Bay. Climbing and by Toyota, the official hybrid vehicles of the Yankees. All right, we go to the bottom of the third inning, three nothing Rays. The Yankees have another mountain to climb. They've done it the last two games. Here's Anthony Volpe to start it off. Grounded foul. They are really shading. Volpe to pull on the ground. Lau is about as far as you can go at second base, almost beyond the bag, which you can't be, but uh, he's as close as you can be. In the outfield, they play him straight away. Rip foul. Volpe gave the team some energy yesterday when he laid down a bunt, stole second, stole third, scored on a wild pitch. That that made it six five. Still 0 and 2. One and two on Volpe. So he's now 13 for 13 and stolen bases. First player to do that in Yankee history. 
be successful in his first 13 stolen base attempts. That's off of Eflin. He's going to scramble after it. Fields fires the first, not in time. That's a base hit for Volpe. Let's see if Eflin's okay. Boy, he had some good swings in this at bat. Finally got a pitch he could handle and just lined it off Eflin. Something that actually got the glove, which is a good thing for him. Waves everybody back to the dugout, says he's okay. So let's see if Volpe goes. You know, Aaron Judd spoke about this, said when he's dancing around at first and second, he said the pitcher is paying attention. The catcher is paying attention. And what Judge is intimating, if they're paying attention to him, they're not 100% focused on the mm -hmm. plate. Here's Trevino. One and oh. Draws the throw. He broke the previous record held by Joe DiMaggio, who was 12 for 12, but that was over the 1936, 37, and 38 seasons. High pop up. That's going to drop, but they'll get the force at second base. Nothing that Volpe could do. No, really? Absolutely nothing. And then that th this was sun. Uh, it was uh, affecting walls. But, to, you know, Volpe at the end of the play figured it out. And, and there's this you can't get too far off because if it is caught, you're going to get doubled up. Franco didn't even see it. Yeah, that's that that's a sun ball right there. So that is uh, scored a 5 4 fielder's choice allowing. Trevino to reach. They replace Volpe with Trevino. That's not a good trade for the Yankees on the bases. <laughs> just going to say the bad thing that happened on that play is you get Trevino at, at first base instead of Volpe, who is, uh, you know, chances are going to try to attempt to steal. One and one. Cabrera starting to heat up again. He has six ribbies in his last six games, and he had seven RBIs first 29 games. Went through an extended slump there for a while. Two and two on the number nine hitter, Oswaldo Cabrera. High fly ball, right field. Going back low. He's on the track. He's at the wall. See ya. A two run home run for Cabrera. Yankees on the board. 3 2 Rays. Cabrera is really starting to have some good swings. A big hit yesterday, a clutch RBI single the night before, and now a two run homer. That's some offense that you are waiting for. Third of the year, 14th and 15th RBI. Bowers takes a strike.
One and one. That got the crowd involved. Looped into left field. That is going to dunk in for a base hit. Bauer stays at first with a single. I might go in the game. There's bloops and there's blasts. Let's look at the blast. Boom, that's a two run homer. You can see Yankees back in the game just over the glove out there off the top of the wall. Now he got a little blooper to follow it from Bowers. Yankees are rolling with Aaron Judge at the plate. Here's the bloop you were talking about. <laughs> they all count. And the pitch to Judge is a strike. Snap throw to first. Bowers dives back. Bowers now six for his last 12. Yankees like what they see. That's why he's leading off today. He wanted to have a lot of lefties in the lineup against Eflin. Wanted to separate them, so they figured a good spot would be Bowers at the top. 3 2 Tampa Bay. One and two. Now, Tampa Bay is really hoping that Eflin gives them some length because their bullpen has been pretty shaky against the Yankees and also has been used a lot. It'd be interesting to see how the Yankees get the final outs of this game if they have a lead because their bullpen is short today as well. Swing and a miss. Judge down on strikes. Waved at that one. Again, watch the front hip. It kind of opens up and then the breaking ball, nothing to do with it. Yesterday you saw some great swings by Aaron Judge and every once in a while you know as a hitter you're fooled or you're in your back of your mind you're thinking something else but so good to see him back in the lineup you just get a better feeling coming into the stadium know that Aaron Judge is in the lineup. High fly ball right field low back turning looking see ya into the second deck a two run shot by Rizzo and the Yankees lead four to three. I'll tell you what, this has been a fun weekend for Anthony Rizzo with the bobblehead night. Two home runs. Said his mother and family were in town for Mother's Day. Well, happy Mother's Day, Mom. That's my ninth of the year. Nine homers, 22 ribbies. And really just reveling in Yankee Stadium. Numbers are unbelievable here in the Bronx. His eighth home run in the Bronx. And they've really tried to pound him in. If they miss a little bit out over the plate, that's what can happen. And there's a strike to LeMahieu. Well, that swing looks like it's made for Yankee Stadium, doesn't it, Michael? Mm -hmm. They'll open up right on top of the plate. He used to hit like that was Greg Nettles. He would uh, get right on top of the plate and just dare you and try to hook the ball outside and get to the ball inside. Rizzo's off to a great start, hitting 314, nine homers and 22 ribbies. Swing and a miss. As LeMahieu goes down on strikes, but the Yankees go long ball to take the lead. First Cabrera with a two run home run. This one just barely. Cadillac scoreboard, Yankees lead 4-3. Josh Lowe leads off against Clark Schmidt, and Lowe swings and misses. He struck out in the second. So the Yankees have out-homered all teams in the month of May. 
And they add two more to that number. There's a ground ball a second. Booted by Cabrera. Not in time. That's an E4. Uh, these are the outs that you just cannot give Tampa Bay. Offensively, they're too good. And then, Michael, you talked about a Rosarina. Pretty much this whole team, they get down the line. And if you boot something, give them an opportunity, they'll beat it out. You know what's amazing, Michael? Take yourself back, you know, a week, 10 days. And every time the Yankees gave up a couple okay. runs early, you were like, yeah, they're not going to score runs. Right. Just, they're, they're done. And right now, what a different feeling. They give up a couple runs, six yesterday, give up a couple today, boom. All of a sudden, bottom of the fourth, you're ahead in the game again. Well, Paul, when they, they were going through that rough patch, if the other team scored a run, you felt... Oh, I'm not sure that they can come back. Could be a tough yeah. fight. <laughs> yep. But slowly but surely getting people back. And Donaldson should be returning shortly, then Stanton after that. Oswald Peraza is in a rehab assignment at Scranton, and he hit a home run in his first at bat today. So we could see him return as well. Although it'd be very interesting to see what they do with the roster to get him back on. Runner goes. Throw to second. Got him. Good tag by Volpe. Well, Michael, you don't have to worry uh, or practice that very much. Got him because you don't see it a lot in the MLB now. Guys being thrown out. Great throw. Quick tag. See if they're going to challenge this. Well, the home plate umpire gave them a lot of time to look. It's supposed to be 15 seconds, seemed longer, but they decided not to challenge. So 2 0 count on Taylor Walls. Good throw and a quick tag. High fly ball. Deep right center going back judge on the track at the wall can make the play and playing the carom out there is Bader as walls will be hustling to third with a triple and Clark Schmidt ran over the Rays third base coach as he was going to, to back up. Well he certainly did but I tell you what I didn't know walls had this kind of speed I mean going around second base. He was off to the races. This ball off the bat, you thought had a chance to get out of here. Aaron Judge gives it an effort. But then Clark Smith, he knows once it's off the wall, there's a possibility of a triple. The next thing you know, there's a collision over in the third base in the <laughs> coaching box. Yeah, Brady Williams was there. He was in the spot he had to be in. But you see that Schmidt ran him over. Brady Williams, by the way, is the son of former Blue Jay manager Jimmy Williams. And the Yankees checking on Schmidt looks like he's okay, but Walls was hustling out of the box. He did not assume home run. Jimmy Williams, there's a name from the past, huh? Mm -hmm. Baseball lifer, right? Schmidt didn't say a word. Not a word. <laughs> How you doing? How are you? Nope. Take that. Just steamrolled them and said, <laughs> okay, later. So a triple for Walls. The Yankees bring the infield in. Luke Raley at the plate. 1 0. Oh. Rarely likes hitting on the road away from Tropicana Field hitting 360 18 for 50 with seven home runs and 13 ribbies. That will not get a run in but who's going to get it battling the sun LeMayhew fights it into the glove for the second out. Well, a huge out right there anytime I mean we've been through this over and over again that you can save a run. 
it can affect the outcome of the game. And right now, now you've got two outs. You've got to make some pitches, try to steal your way out of this inning without giving up a run. Top of the fourth inning, 4 3, Yankees over the Rays. Runner at third base, two outs. Here's Bethancourt, struck out in the second inning. 0 and 1. One and one. This is where you really figure out what Clark Schmidt is comfortable with. I mean, is he is his sinker his favorite pitch or his breaking ball? Because the biggest outs in the game is where you can really study a pitcher and what they believe is their best pitch. Today, Mother's Day trivia. Which two players have hit the most home run on Mother's Day all time? Tweet your answer using hashtag Yes Network Trivia. How would you know this? I know one thing. I know some guy that didn't hit a lot of home run. That'd be me. Wow. Uh, so let's just give him that hint. I know that Mickey Mantle hit his 500th home run on, on Mother's Day, but I'm not sure if he hit a lot of other ones. <laughs> And I'm told that the names are just as big or bigger than Mantle. All right, I'm throwing Babe Ruth and Joe DiMaggio in there. All right. Mother's Day only started in 1914, strangely. I guess there were no moms before that. I guess there had to be. Wow. Yeah. Why not honor these women way back? <laughs> A base hit for Bader. You know what happened on this day, Mike? I was looking through the notes, May 14th. And his father was just getting ready to have and then prepped for open heart surgery. Dwight Gooden threw that unexpected no hitter mm -hmm. against the Seattle Mariners. I, I, I remember that so well. It's kind of Doc's like last hurrah, you know, that uh, he threw a no hitter. 2 nothing win over Seattle across the street at the old place. Here's Willie Calhoun runner on first. Bader leads. The one play I'll always remember about that game is Gerald Williams catching center field in the first inning. Yeah. You know, you can take every perfect game, every no hitter, and if you break it down early in the game, there's usually a play. Mm -hmm. that, you know, whether you, you have no clue as a player that it's going to end up being or saving that, but it, it kind of sets the stage later that, you know, that this is a no hitter or a perfect game. And looking at that Seattle line, that was a tough lineup to no hit. Yeah, I remember Sorrento made the last out. He mm -hmm. popped up. But yeah, they had Ken Griffey Jr., Jay Buhner, Edgar Martinez. Yeah, it's not too bad. You really are kind of waiting for Harrison Bader to get, uh, you know, in that part of that running game. He's been hitting the ball so well, home runs, doubles, triples. But he has great speed, he can become a base stealer as well. Take a look back at White's no hitter. And there's the last out. What a moment. You 
You know, there's certain guys, Michael, that you play against. And I, I played against Doc when he was in his heyday with the Mets and I was with the Reds. And you just like, you, you know, I'm, you just didn't like him because he was good. And, mm -hmm. he, you know, you were fearful that, you know, you could have that game where you'd strike out four times. And then as a teammate, one of the nicest guys. And you just you leave the game with the memories of playing with him. Fly ball, center field. Siri is there. One away. Well, this Mother's Day, join Major League Baseball and Susan G. Komen in the fight against breast cancer. Scan the QR code displayed on your screen to learn more. You know, one name we left out of that Mariner line, that guy, no hit, A Rod, was playing that. Oh, yeah, he was a pretty good player, too. Joey Cora was in that lineup. It's his birthday today, too. Everything's tying together. <laughs> Volpe fouls it off. And you know who started for the Mariners that day? Um, Jamie Moyer? Sterling Hitchcock. Sterling Hitchcock. All right. It was a lefty. Where it goes. Foul the way. Well, again, it's good to see Harrison Bader start in motion. Volpe, nothing he can do, obviously, down in the count. But Bader had 17 stolen bases last year, not even a full year, so he is very capable. One and two on Volpe. Swing and a miss. He's down on strikes, two away. In the bottom of the fourth inning, Aggies lead the race four to three. And you saw a lot of pitchers early in the year using the outside corner here up in the strike zone. Volpe has a slight uppercut. That's a pitch that he's going to have to lay off because it's not a pitch that really set up for his swing. Trevino takes a strike. Reached on a fielder's choice and scored on Cabrera's home run in the third. You see the barrel of the base just underneath the baseball. And when you swing up a little bit, which, you know, is today's theory in hitting, that high strike is very hard to catch up with. 0 oh 2. One and two on Trevino. Well, the Rays scored a run in the first and two in the third. Yankees answered back with a couple of two run home runs in the bottom of the third inning, and uh, they lead four to three. Two and two. Swing and a miss. Trevino down on strike. So that'll do it here in the fourth for the Yankees. The leadoff single by Bader is wasted. He's stranded at first. We go to the fifth. All right, let's 
see the answer to that trivia question. Which two players hit the most home runs on Mother's Day all time? I'm going with Hammer and Hank. He hit a lot of homers. Let's see. Look at you. <laughs> wow. Well, I pulled one out of my hat. I called my mom. I FaceTimed her. She, she let me know about that one. She knew. Yeah. Siri swings and misses. You know, we said that they, Mother's Day started in 1914, mm -hmm. right? So a friend of mine said, I bet you that was when Hallmark was uh, found. <laughs> exactly. And I just looked it up. Hallmark was founded in 1910. Wow. Took them four years to come yeah. out with it. That's right. They were making designs for the cards. <laughs> All right, so James, get to work. So Mother's Day was started in 1914. Mm -hmm. When did Father's Day start? Same year? Weak hack by Siri. He goes down on strikes. Yeah, this is total a backup slider that just kind of fooled Siri. Back to the top of the order and Isak Paredes. No bite on that one. You know, one and oh. Coming into this inning, I mean, it's been a full bag of tricks for Schmidt. Cutter 17, sweeper 16, knuckle curve 15, sinker 13, and only one change up. So he really hasn't leaned on one pitch all day. He's kind of trying to use everything. Big sinker to end the inning, last inning with the strikeout. While we are we're told that we don't believe that Father's Day became an official holiday to, since 1972, but it has been celebrated since 1910. That was when Hallmark started. Hey, so you're bringing it all together, Mike. But if they celebrated in 1910, that makes it an official holiday then. You would think. A day of observance. That's the difference. Gotcha. Now there's Mother's Day bases, Mother's Day caps. So three and two. Paredes, who has one at bat and single, right in on the hands, foul bat. How you grip that one, Michael? But the, you know, every once in a while, a breaking ball is supposed to go away from a righty. But you, you saw the last pitch to Siri, and then that pitch right there—they're backing up. They're, they're going the other way, and that's what's fooling the hitter. It's frustrating for Schmidt because he knows he's not getting the break that he wants, but it's fooling the hitter. Well, Schmidt in his last start went six innings. That's career high. They, they need that again and, and maybe a little more. Their bullpen is so very short. Swing and a miss. They do not want to use Peralta today. He pitched two days in a row and because there were such lengthy at bats, he threw 30 pitches. In the ninth inning yesterday, so they definitely are not using him. Holmes as well. Ground ball grabbed there by Cabrera. There's no one to throw to, so Franco reaches with a single. Moving to second is Paredes. Yeah, by knocking that ball down, you keep a first and second instead of a first and third. But again, Peralta or else Cabrera gets to it. But Rizzo had broke for the ball also, and I didn't think there was a play. Franco runs too well. Matt Blake goes out and talks with Clark Schmidt.
Spectrum One is fast, secure, and reliable. Internet for $49.99 a month. Free advanced Wi-Fi and a free mobile line. Restrictions apply. Visit Spectrum.com for details. Meeting on the mound. As Albert Abreu gets ready. So the best that we could surmise is Abreu obviously is available. He's warming up right now. Ryan Weber. They could use Marinaccio if need be. And if they had to close the game, in all likelihood, it's going to be Ian Hamilton. Everybody else is really been stretched to the limit. Yeah, you would think if they did put King in there that it would probably be just for three outs. I mean, they would if, if that, yes. Not multiple innings. Here's Lau. And that's a base hit to right field. Judge comes up. He throws the second. The runner was held at third, so they were going to let him score. But he was held there by Williams, so the bases are now loaded. Yeah, a little confusion there. This ball's hit so hard, really no chance to score. If Aaron Judge goes straight to the plate. Kind of a one hopper right to him. All the runners held up just a moment. They didn't know if Cabrera was going to make the catch, so that benefited them. And I think that judge thought he had a chance at the force at second. Big at bat as Arosa Reina takes outside. One and one. There's always a few at bats, Michael, that uh, come into play on who's going to win or lose. And if you would pick one out, this would probably be it. You know, the league's leading hitter, bases loaded, and Schmidt kind of at the end of his leash here in the fifth. One and two. There's a good cutter. Again, he's gone back to that. He has used everything. Fly ball, left center on the run is Bader. Dives and makes the play. Oh, what a play. Run scores. It's a tie game. They throw to second. Is it a double play? No, it's not. But Bader just saved two runs with that catch. Boy, what a difference you've seen since Harrison Bader has been back in center field. He is making play after play. Right, Michael. I mean, some plays are bigger than others. When you make this play out on the warning track with bases loaded, you're taking runs off the board for now. Obviously, a sacrifice fly, but it could have been easily a three run double. I think Schmidt also thought that he might have left early at second base, but boy, I tell you what, that does not take away. From the play that Harrison Bader just made, but bases loaded. So Franco tagged and went to third. Lau didn't, because Lau was going to thinking about scoring if the ball fell in. So he did not go back and tag. So he remains at first. Low at the plate. So we have a tie game at four. What a play by Bader. Again, it's about the break and the jump and Harrison Bader the route that he takes to the ball. There's no arc to it. It's a straight line and it just he makes a great play. And it, it, it could change this game and definitely change this inning depending on what happens here with low at the plate. You know there are some dives in the outfield that our colleague David Cohn calls I wash that you're doing it just for show. He had to sell out just to make that catch.
two one. Three and one. So Rosarena with the sack fly, his 35th ribby. An attempt to clear the bases, but foiled by Bader. Three and two. Runner will go from first. Three two count on low. Missed outside. That'll load the bases. Well, this pitch could have gone either way, too. It looks like it got to the corner at the end, but kind of around the plate. Wow. Tough pitch to take right there. Looks like it got the corner just barely by a lace, but didn't get the call. Second trip to the mound, so that's going to do it for Schmidt. Boone takes the ball, calls on Abreu. Coming up, Taylor Walls. Bases loaded, tie game. We are in the fifth. Stay right here. Well, here's a look at what the pregame run total was for our game when it started, courtesy of FanDuel. Now, the numbers can change with every pitch, so now let's see what the live total is at this very moment. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Download the FanDuel app now and start making every moment more. What a big spot in this game. Albert Abreu in his 15th game of the year. He walks too many people, but he has great stuff. Bases loaded, Taylor Walls at the plate. 1 0. Franco's at third, Lau is at second, Low is at first. Two men out, one run in, it's 4 4. There's a strike, 1 and 1. Good changeup. One and two, another change. An effective pitch for a guy who throws 99. Yeah, coming out of the bullpen in this situation, you really cannot figure out, you know, what do I have a feel for? You just have to pitch and hope it's immediate. High fly ball, deep right center, going back judge. He's on the track, looking up. See ya. A grand slam by Walls. And it's 8-4, Tampa Bay. Well, we kind of broke down walls early in this series. Here was a guy that could always catch the ball and was not able to do anything offensively. And then all of a sudden, he's found his stroke. His seventh of the year. Up to 18 RBIs on the year also. See you later. And now Malinsky throws out later. somebody from the Yankee out dugout. Let's get out of here. Looked like Boone was barking at him, but I don't know who got thrown out. And that was the third consecutive changeup that he threw to Walls, and that one ended up in the seats as a grand slam. I think it was a pitching coach, Matt Blake, who got tossed. Well, the Yankees will have to come back again as they trail 8 4. And rarely swings and misses. Again, another changeup. That one didn't have the movement down and away. 
kind of left the mark there, Michael. Five and four runs. Mm. Seventh home run. Now has 18 ribbies. And today has a triple and a home run to go along with the strikeout. First career grand slam. Swing and a miss. Really down on strikes. But the Rays score five to come back from trailing 4 3 to leading 8 4. Delta keep climbing. Audi scoreboard 8 4 Tampa Bay. You know, there's old baseball cliche, Paul, that. You go back to back to back with pitches that would be better each time than the uh, the previous one. Just curious the decision by Abreu. Three change-ups. The guy throws 99 miles an hour. You got him on the first two changes. Yeah, if you it was actually four. Four. In a row. It was a four-pitch at bat, and all four pitches being change-ups. And uh, you know, this is Trevino or this is Abreu. I don't know. Obviously. Uh, you know, when you get a couple strikes, you fall in love with it. But like you said, it, it's got better. It's got to be better and better outside the strike zone. That ball was just belt high, right down the middle. Another old saying is a bad changeup is just an awful fastball. Mm -hmm. Three and zero. Oh. Do the Yankees have another? Rally in them. They did it on Friday. They did it yesterday, and they're going to have to do it again today. They've already done it once today. They're down three nothing to go ahead four three. Now they're down eight four. Bottom of the fifth inning. Still plenty of time. Seventy pitches for Eflin, and that's a bunt, and that's a base hit. So Cabrera hits a home run his last time up. Now picks up a bunt single to start out the fifth. Yeah, down by four. I mean, you need base runners, and it's just a smart play. He's got good speed, doing some good things in this series, as like we have said, has got some big hits, and they got the home run. I'll start off the bottom of the fifth here with a base hit. So here's Bowers. He's one for two. Blooped a single left his last time up. Came around to score on Rizzo's home run. So in the top of the Yankee order here. Right back to Eflin. There's one. And there's two. A 1-6-3 double play. Here's Aaron Judge, and let's take a look at the Yankee leaders brought to you by Citizens Made Ready. 29 multi home run games, 29th was yesterday. Babe Ruth had the most in franchise history with 68. When you look at Ruth's numbers, I mean, they're, they're silly. Unbelievable. Yeah. And he was doing it when no one was doing that stuff. And I was looking through some articles, always trying to figure out, you know, the things that bring kind of these series together. And, the, you know, he hit the longest home run, supposedly, in his career in spring training down in Tampa at Plant Field, which is now the University of Tampa's football field. Mm -hmm. They walked it off, I know, like 578 feet or something. And there is a plaque at that point. And that's actually when uh, he became a hitter and they took the. Uh, his pitching glove off his hand and he became an everyday hitter. Two and two on Judge, who's 0 for 2 against Eflin. Three and two. Swing and a miss. Judge down on strikes. No runs to hit. And no one left. We go to the sixth inning.
Well, thank you, Bob. Montefiore Einstein scoreboard. We go to the sixth. The Rays eight, Yankees four. Abreu is still in there. Bethancourt leads off. Slider is inside 1-0. and Yankees do begin a four-game set in Toronto tomorrow night. Four straight games against the Blue Jays. And then three games in Cincinnati against the Reds. High fly ball. Bowers fighting the sun. Bowers makes the play. Now let's go around the majors. Zach Greinke, fifth pitcher all time to strike out 1,000 different batters. So 1,000 guys don't like him. Bryce Miller, 0.47 ERA in his first three career starts for Seattle. And Wilson Contreras expected to catch tomorrow for the first time since May 4th. They signed him to a five-year, mega-million-dollar deal to be their catcher. And they said, oh, by the way, he's not a catcher anymore. Mm -hmm. Every catcher is going to kind of pale in comparison to Yadi or Molina. Yeah. yeah. Two and zero oh to Siri. And a strike two one. So the home plate umpire Mike Molinsky has thrown out the Yankee pitching coach Matt Blake for seemingly arguing from the dugout. You know, Michael, I was talking to you about that famous home run that made Babe Ruth a, a hitter instead of a pitcher. And there actually is a plaque down in Tampa. Uh, we have a, a shot of that, but you know, it, it, three or four different ways of counting how far it went. For some reason, LeMay double clutched there and then threw one in the dirt that Rizzo could not scoop. We'll see how it scored. Yeah, that was strange there, Michael. It's not like he lost the handle or anything. Uh, I don't know if he could not pick up Rizzo or what happened there. He gets an error. Back to the top of the lineup and Paredes, one for one with a walk and two runs scored. And there's the plaque. 587 feet, <laughs> April 4th, 1919. Wow. Paredes gets plunked. Well, the Rays probably getting tired of getting hit. That only seemed to be more of a feature than a glitch of this uh, matchup through the years from both sides. But I believe that just one Yankee has been hit in these seven games, and that was Harrison Bader. Uh, two seamer just runs in, hits him right on top of the elbow, but. Gets away from him. I, I, you know, it's just it's hard to imagine. And usually the the circumstances around it show you that it's not intentional. I mean, you're you're in the middle of a game here, man, on first base. You're not trying to drill somebody. Well, it's six Rays have been hit mm -hmm. and one Yankee in the seven games. And I think that what you're saying, the Rays and, and Kevin Cash realize that these are not on purpose. It's not the time you want to move another runner into scoring position, and, and that's probably tempering any kind of anger that they might be feeling but you never like getting hit No, and there does come a point in time where you know as a as an organization or a team that you know if you're that comfortable throwing inside then you know we're going to be comfortable throwing inside too. So Paredes is going to stay in. <laughs> Thank you. 
So here's Franco, first and second one out. We're in the sixth inning, 8 4 Rays. And another Ray gets hit. And he goes down. So does Volpe. So the pickoff attempt hit Siri. Looks like he's laughing about it. Helped up by Cabrera. You figure you, you're safe on base. <laughs> I guess not. Looked like he stepped on Volpe's foot. That's why Volpe fell. Yeah. And a strike. This could be two. There's one. And there's two. Boy, did they need that. A 4 6 3 double play. No runs, no hits. One error, one man left. Really changed the game. I mean, uh, the Yankees still in it down four, but an unbelievable catch. And you always take a catch like that and put it in context of what the situation was. That was with bases loaded. That could have been a three run double. Montefiore Einstein scoreboard, bottom of the sixth inning, 8 7 0 for the Rays, 4 7 and 2 for the Yankees. Well, this is a new feature of the grounds crew. I've been covering the Yankees now for 37 years, and these last two days are the first time I've seen this apparatus brought out. <laughs> so Eflin wanted the mound uh, doctored a bit. There. The hole was too big around the rubber, so that's what they did, but they bring out the blower first. So it'll be Rizzo, LeMahieu, and Bader as the Yankees are down by four, eight to four. Doesn't Eflin's body type, kind of square shoulders, look like Nathan Avaldi a little? Yeah, I, I see that now, no doubt about it. Looks like he has a hanger in his uniform. <laughs> yeah. A little taller than Avaldi, but still, I, I see where you're coming from. So Rizzo's one for two, a strikeout and a two-run home run. Last 12 games, two or more hits in seven games, hitting 404. <laughs> and a strike. Rays did make a, a change in their bullpen. Javi Guerra, who has struggled in the series, was uh, released. They brought up Zach Littell, a right-hander, in their bullpen. Now, I was talking to some baseball people, Paul, and, you know, the Rays are off to such an amazing start. But a lot of people feel that their one thing that could go wrong is their bullpen with injuries. Because in the past, they've always had plug-and-play relievers. They bring people. They don't have that much depth anymore. In the bullpen, they'll, they'll get that Pete Fairbanks at some point. That's going to help, but their bullpen might be a little light. Grounded foul. And you watch the way Kevin Cash manages where that bullpen is a huge part of their game. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's not shy about getting to his bullpen, you know, early, middle of the game. Foul the way. in the last time up trying to pound him in and he got out over the plate this ball in off the plate and there's it's very hard for a hitter even if you hit it hard to keep it fair three and two on Rizzo 
85 pitches for Eflin. And Rizzo calls time. And that's a good at bat for Rizzo as he works a leadoff walk. You know, Paul, the uh, the Rays might have to have to start paying New York taxes because they've been here for four days. Tomorrow's an off day, and then they play the Mets three games at City Field. Yeah, I was talking uh, to Dwayne Stats, their announcer, over next door to us, and I was like, "Oh, you got a day off in New York, and then you go and play." It, it, it's a strange series, but uh, you know, as a player, you would love that schedule to come into a city and and not have to leave. Just go across town, take a different bridge. Same hotel. Yeah. One and one on LeMahieu. DJ's one for two today. Single through the right side and then struck out. Ray's getting their bullpen ready. One and two. Good take two and two. Bader is on deck. And the pitch foul away. Rizzo leads off first, held there by Paredes. Still two and two. This home stand for the Yankees, they swept the A's. And they've taken two of the first three against the Rays. This is the final game of the home stand. 2-2. Two -two. Strike three. And LeMayu knew it. And that'll bring up Harrison Bader. And congratulations go to Harrison Bader on being voted the Monitor Einstein Player of the Week. What a week it was, last seven games. 360, two home runs, six ribbies, an OPS of 1.189. Quick trip to the mound, talk things over with Eflin. This could be his last batter. They have a lefty up in the bullpen, and Calhoun is on deck for the Yanks. It's Poche, the lefty, and Kelly, the righty. Harrison Bader, he's he's sporting the eye pink today. It's not the eye black. He's got the eye pink working. Yes, he does. Boy, what a difference he's made! Just uh, just his presence in center field, coming back offensively, giving this team a spark. I mean, he has been something. I mean, they were they were mixing and matching anyone they could think of him put in center field while he was out. And there's his mom Janice who did a lineup today. And a strike. You know, Boone told a great story today about his mom and the involvement she had with him growing up in terms of like supporting 
you know, all the sports that he played. His brother Brett was at USC. He was in high school. And his other brother was in Little League, Matt. And then his dad was playing for the Angels. He said my mom would see about 15, 16 games a week. Wow. Grounded to third. There's one on to first. Not in time. Bader beats out the return. Moms do a lot of that, a lot of shoveling. I, I see what my wife does with the kids. Yeah, they certainly do. I mean, uh, it's a full-time job. There's no doubt about that. So here's Calhoun. Yankees down 8-4. We're in the bottom of the six. One and oh. Eflin looking to go five and one. If he and the bullpen could hold on. Four run deficit the Yankees are looking at. Calhoun skips rope to get out of the way of that two and oh. There's a strike, 2-1 on Calhoun. Willie is uh, 0 for 2 today with a strikeout and a fly ball to center. Yankees have two home runs today. Major League high 25 home runs in the month of May so far. Runner goes. Pitch outside. There'll be no throw. A stolen base for Bader. Well, that's his first of the year, and I think there's many to come. A tremendous jump right there, not even a throw. Off and running. And you see how much Volpe has really changed with the stolen base, and Bader can be part of that also. Just add another facet to the game of the Yankees on how they can score runs. I love that part of the game this year. The guys stealing bases. 3 2 on Calhoun. Bader is at second. Two men out. Right back to Eflin. And that'll do it here in the sixth. No runs, no hits, no errors. One man left. Six in the books. It's 8 4 Tampa Bay. By Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center and by FanDuel make every moment more. Now, Paul, this falls under the heading of the changing face of baseball. The Tampa Bay Rays are the first team in the history of the game to actually have an analytics coach in uniform in the dugout. His name is Jonathan Ehrlichman, and they call him J Money. J Money. J Money. Analytical coach. It makes sense because there's so much information yeah. disseminated to the players rather than pass it to a coach. There's Jay Money who just, I guess he's shy. <laughs> but this guy actually has the info and is able to communicate it to the players. Mm -hmm. I would have uh, paid a good deal of money, Paul, to... Walk into the Yankee coach's room and see Jay Money dressing next to Don Zimmer. <laughs> yeah, that'd have gone over well. Huh? <laughs> There's Jay Money. The Rays are really a heavily analytic team. Well, that was a uh, pitching clock violation by Abreu, so he gets a ball, 2-1. Now 3-1. Lau leading off. Now 
And the pitch is high, so a walk to Brandon Lau. Boone getting a clarification on that pitch timer violation. So here is Randy Arozarena, sack fly his last time up. Just a wonderful play by Bader with the bases loaded. So one run scored rather than three. But then the next batter walked, and after that, Abreu served up the grand slam to Walls. Oh, and two on a Rosarena. Popped up. Volpe makes the play. One down. Here's Josh Lowe. And there's a strike. Amazing the difference, uh, you know. If three innings ago, you know, the Yankees exploded a couple home runs, the fans are up. It, it, it's just how much offense adds to the excitement of the game from the fans' perspective. Huh? And all of a sudden now, you know, you've got the Yankees have been shut down for the last three innings. It, it becomes very just quiet and it, like they're waiting for something to happen. But again, you've got to get through this Rays lineup to get your hitters back to the plate. One and two. Interesting to note that, you know, Bray really struggled to the point that he was released, and the Yankees ended up picking him back up last June. So in 27 games, they had a 2.41 ERA. It looked like they, they fixed whatever was wrong with him in Kansas City. But he has a 9-0 ERA in his last 10 games. Just does not have the command that he has to have to be really effective, even though he throws so hard. Swing and a miss like that. Two away. That'll bring up Terrell Walls and also brings us to exit velocity presented by Spectrum. So Walls. 100.2 miles per hour. That's the exit velocity. Travel 387 feet. And that's the difference in this game. Now you watch Walls play. Like he's he's a shortstop by trade, but he can play second and play third. I defy you. To find a better defender at all major league. It picked the best defender you want at shortstop. I think Walls could play with him, but he just couldn't hit. So in 21 and 22, he had a 183 batting average, a 288 slugging percentage, both in the bottom five in the majors. This year, he's hitting 274, slugging at 579. So, I mean, what a valuable player he's become. Yeah, and moving around the infield a lot more. Obviously, he filled in for Franco last year when he was hurt at shortstop. And but he can play anywhere. He's mm -hmm. kind of like a DJ LeMayhew where you could put him in third, second, anywhere, and he's going to catch the ball for you. And has an unbelievable arm. You can hang laundry on it, uh, the throw he makes from third. So you put hitting with that. 
You know, he was so good defensively that the fact that he couldn't hit didn't even bother the race. But they've unlocked something in him. And the pitch upstairs. I think Jay Money got in his head, Michael. You think so? Yeah, reprogrammed him with the analytics. It's worked. I'm sure they'd say that has something to do with it. <laughs> two balls, two strikes, two outs. Diving and off the glove of Oswaldo Cabrera trickles into right field. So another base hit for Walls as Lau moves to third. Again, hard contact. Cabrera able to knock it down but not glove it. Trickles into right field and then you see Aaron Judge call him off because he the plays in front of him in case a throw needs to be made. Ball's now a double short of the cycle. Here's Luke Raley. Want to keep the uh, the Rays right here at 8-4. Top of the seventh inning. Runner goes from first. Throw to second. Not in time. And the throw back to third. Getting back is Lau. So a stolen base for Walls. Doing it all today. Two and oh. Uh, yeah, again, you're in that situation of two outs, and you got to break this down to this is kind of a must inning that you have to get out of right here. I mean, where you're four runs down right now, base hit will play two more. So this is kind of you're breaking it down to if we're going to have a chance to get back into this game, we're going to have to get through here, the top of the seventh. And this is all Abreu. The Yankees don't have anybody up in the bullpen. We told you before, the Yankee bullpen is fried today. And it was going to take some pitching gymnastics to get through 27 outs. Fly ball, long run for Bowers toward the line. Makes the seats out of play. There's the uh, the usage. So two days in a row for Holmes, he's out. Two days in a row for Peralta, he's out. Two out of three days for Maranacho, he's a maybe. Hamilton was available. Cordero they want to stay away from but if need be he's available and King I'm sure they'd like to stay away from but if need be he's available. Three and two on rally. Big payoff pitch. Swing and a miss. Big strikeout for Abreu. No runs you hit. No errors and two men left on base at the end of six and a half innings of play. It's time for the seventh inning stretch. Rays lead the Yankees eight to four, but we stay right here as we honor America here on Mother's Day in the Bronx. All right, fans, it's stretch time, so please join in and sing along as Yankee Stadium organist Ed Alstrom plays Take Me Out to the Ball Game. All right, thanks guys. 8 8 0 for Tampa Bay, 4 7 and 2 for the Yankees. Eflin, six innings, seven hits, four runs. 
Walks is one struck out nine. Taylor Wall's a big day. Clark Smith struggled in the fifth. Cabrera and Rizzo each with two on home runs and the Yankees 29 runs allowed in four games this series. So first moving to the bullpen for Kevin Cash. Colin Pochet comes on. 17th game. Bottom of the order for the Yanks starting with Volpe. And a strike to the Yankee shortstop. Volpe singled off of Eflin and then struck out. So he's one for two. Pitch upstairs. He holds up. One and one. Bottom of the seventh inning, Yankees down by four, eight to four. Volpe, Trevino, and Cabrera against Poche. Two and one. Ryan Weber is up. Two and two on Volpe. Kevin Kelly is ready. And the pitch. Strike three, Volpe down looking. Again, you see Volpe probably looking away here, kind of locked up on the pitch inside. So here is Trevino. One and zero on Trevino. He's zero for two today. An announced crowd of forty-two thousand one hundred and sixteen here on Mother's Day at the stadium. Tell you what, the weather, the day, other than the scoreboard, doesn't get much better than this, huh, Michael? Beautiful day. One, two now. And you would imagine Aaron Boone is kind of staying away from a lot of the question marks in the bullpen today, but if they have a spark offensively, you know, the, those guys will be called into action. But right now, down four runs, he's going to put Weber in there. Unless they can rally here and get closer to the Rays in the next few innings. That one has popped up. Lau makes the play. Two down. Hey, Yankee fans, is there a hero in your life who hits it out of the park? Well, Hyundai wants to award a hero with a 2023 Hyundai Tucson. To nominate your hero, use the QR code on screen or visit HyundaiSaluteToHeroes.com and tell us why they should win. Two down against Poche, and here is Oswaldo Cabrera batting from the right side. Upstairs, 1 0. That one is looped into left field. It's a base hit for Oswaldo Cabrera. That's his third hit of the afternoon. Yeah, he's had a really big series here. We've gone over it a couple big uh, run scoring singles, a home run, and three hits today. So maybe offensively, he's starting to turn things around. And believe me, if he swings the bat, he's going to find himself a lot more playing time. Well, with Bowers due up, they're going to go to Glaber Torres. Did not start the game, had a day off, but now thrown into the cauldron. And with the lefty Poche on the mound, here comes Cash. He's going to bring on Kelly to face Torres. So Torres pinch hitting for Bowers. Runner on first, two men out, 8 4 Tampa Bay. Thousand guests 
21 and older are going to receive a Yankee short sleeve hoodie courtesy of Budweiser. Get your tickets today at Yankees.com. Sixteenth game for Kevin Kelly. Twenty one innings four walks and 17 strikeouts. And Kelly is going to face the pinch hitter Glaber Torres. On deck Aaron Judge. Bowers was one for three with a run scored while he was in there. Starts him off with a sweeper for a strike. We have noticed Tampa Bay's bullpen when they bring righties in, they're all sidearms. Uh, I mean, they're good matchups for you know lineups that have continuous right-handed hitters. Last strike. That's where Aaron Judge has always tried to stick Anthony Rizzo in between Judge, Lemayhu, Bader, you know, just to switch things up. If you get a pitcher like this, it's going to be extremely tough on right handed hitters. Check swing. Soft ground ball foul. Each team with eight hits, but the big uh, difference in the game the Taylor Walls grand slam off for Albert Abreu in the fifth inning. Michael, do you notice the flowers out here? Is that for Mother's Day uh, in our booth here, or is that? Something? I think it's been there. Got a little garden. Mm -hmm. here. Yep. Guess I should have noticed that. It's important to beautify your workplace. I think Audrey had something mm -hmm. to do with that. Now Marinaccio's up alongside Weber. Hit single. Cabrera will stop at second. That'll bring up Judge. I tell you, watching this series, Michael, and it's time and time again, you don't know how hard it is to pinch hit. And the, the guys coming off the bench seem so ready and put together such good at bats. And another one there by Glaber Torres. Now, the slider, not a bad pitch. Put it in play, hit it up the middle, give Aaron Judge an opportunity. To throw some runs on the board here. And there he is. The guy's wearing a, a path out from the Rays dugout to the pitcher's mound in this four game set. Kyle Snyder. I think Danny Cunningham will be glad when uh, Tampa's out of the. Danny Cunningham, the great grounds crew guy, doesn't like anybody to mess up the grass coming from the dugout. Huh? That becomes the Mets problem <laughs> Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. This copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the New York Yankees and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the New York Yankees, Michael. So here's Judge. Cabrera leads off second, Torres off first. Yankees trying to rally here in the bottom of the seventh. Home plate umpire called time. Yeah, there's something was down on the field in the left field line. I saw some one of the ball guard. Somebody grabbed something down there. There's a strike. Judge probably uh, happy not to see Eflin. Eflin gave him some problems today. 0 for 3 with two strikeouts. Judge had two home runs yesterday. And the pitch outside with the sweeper one on one. <laughs> Fastball misses outside two and one good takes by Judge there. Yeah, you look at yesterday we were talking Michael how hitters don't want the bat you know in the palm of your hands and if you look at Aaron Judge how far he has it out in his fingers that allows him to really release that bat. 
And there's a base hit up the middle. Cabrera rounds third. He will score. It's an RBI single for Judge, and now it's 8-5 Rays. Well, these are the hits you need when you're trying to come back. Two outs, Glaber Torres, big pinch hit, and then Aaron Judge. Oh, up in the strike zone, line it up the middle. Put another one across the plate. Twenty-first Ruby for Judge. So here's Rizzo stepping in as a tying run. Already has a home run today. He's one for two with a walk. Two run shot in the third inning. Nine home runs on the year. Eight of them here in the Bronx. Strike. Crowd's into it again. Anthony Rizzo, I agree with him there. That ball off the plate, sinking away. Absolutely nothing you can do with that pitch from a left-hander. That changes the whole count. 0-2, 2-0, -oh, to 1-1. Swing and a miss. One and two. Again, it's got called. Then you start to fish for it out there as a hitter. It's kind of taking you away from what you want to do. Rizzo had to call an emergency timeout there. He was not in the box. It was nine seconds left on the clock. So he didn't want to get punched out on a pitch timer strikeout. Now back in. Choking up. One, two, swing and a miss. He struck him out, and that'll do it here in the seventh. But the Yankees score a run on three hits, two men left. We will go to the eighth. It's 8-5 eight, Tampa Bay. Electric Audi vehicle, your local Tri-State Audi dealer today. Now well, let's look how this happened. Ball one, this pitch right here changed the at bat off the plate. Well, if he's going to call it, I better swing at it. Then up the ladder, strike three. Big out for Kelly in the Rays. It's amazing what one pitch could do to an at bat and an approach. And that one pitch certainly did that. Here's Ryan Weber coming out of the bullpen to replace Abreu. And Bethancourt lays down a bunt. LeMayu fields, fires. Not in time. That's a bunt single for Christian Bethancourt. Giving the Yankees a little bit of their own medicine. Uh, DJ way back, comes in, bare hands it cleanly. Bethancourt out of the box as a catcher, runs pretty well. So Cabrera moves from second to left. Torres takes over. That second after pinch hitting for Bowers. Siri. We'll try out Cabrera on the run, and he makes the play. <laughs> Tested right away, and he hauled it in. Boy, there was no indecision right here. As soon as this ball was hit off the bat, Cabrera's off to the races knowing I'm going all out. What a great play. Seeing so many of these players coming into the game now, Mike, that gives so much. You know, it, it, it can play second, can play third, can play left field, can play right field, and he plays them all pretty well. One and zero on Paredes, who came in for Diaz. Diaz slight left groin pull, slipping on third base. Since coming in, Paredes is one for one with an RBI, two runs scored, a walk, and hit by pitch. And he's hit again. Seventh batter hit in these seven games by the Rays or by the Yankees of the Rays. He got hit above the elbow last time. Let's see what happens here. It was a breaking ball with no break on it. And hit the elbow again. I don't think I ever in my life got hit twice in a game. Huh? Really? No. I don't think the first time he had on the guard. This time no. he had on the guard. Yeah. 
certainly not pleasing I'm sure no. Here's Franco. One for four. There's a strike. Can the Yankees turn two? There's one. Franco just jogging to first. There's two. Four, six, three. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Well, the Yes app is more, more ways to watch and experience live Yankees, Nets, and Liberty games. More ways to interact with family and friends with Yes Watch Party and more ways to win big cash prizes with Yes Pick and Play games. For the best seat in the house, download the Yes app now. And remember, direct to consumer is available. Hyundai scoreboard, 8-5, Rays lead the Yankees. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning. It'll be the middle of the Yankee order against Trevor Kelly. He was the opener in the game a couple of days ago where Josh Fleming was the bulk guy. So from one Kelly to another, Kevin Kelly to Trevor Kelly. And another sidewinder from the right side for D.J. LeMahieu to try to figure out. Kevin Cash talking with the home plate umpire Mike Malinsky. Not sure what that was about. Well, they started him off with a ball on a pitch timer violation. That's what that was about. Now one and one. As you said earlier in the series, I'm not quite sure how that happened on the first pitch. <laughs> Figured be ready for number one, right? One and two now on LeMahieu. Line drive, it's a base hit to right field. Just past the lunge of Paredes, and it's a leadoff single for LeMahieu. He's two for four. Same type of swing, pick up the ball late, stay inside and just line it to right field, find a hole. But again, you're, you're just trying to get to that tying run. Keep, you know, nickel and diamond may possibly throw up another run, give yourself an opportunity. Down three now. Harrison Bader walking to the plate. Bader one for three has a stolen base takes a strike from Kelly. Got a wave going on here at the stadium. That's the noise you hear. And did that get him or is that a foul ball foul ball. So 0 and 2. You see that drop down delivery, Michael, and it's very hard for righties to pick it up. Oh, running up and in. Grounded to third. There's one on the first, not in time. Tough to double up Bader. Not an easy play, Michael. You had gone over this before. Walls, I mean, he just makes things look easy, but I mean, charging that ball, throwing it across your body, even an attempt at a double play out of this is a good play. Call time as Bader was taking off uh, some of his armor and he was putting on the oven mitt.
Jason Adam. I'm gonna get the nickname Everyday Adam. <laughs> oh and one. Bottom of the eighth inning, Yankees down by three. Bader at first. Fly ball, shallow right. The catch is made by Josh Lowe. Two outs. Hey, tomorrow on Yes, the Yankees travel north of the border to open up a four-game set with the Toronto Blue Jays. Coverage begins at 6.30 with the pregame. That first pitch is scheduled for shortly after 7 on Yes and streaming on the Yes app. Well, the Yankee pitcher's not catching a break these last two uh, two series. You've got Tampa Bay who's leading the world in almost every uh, offensive category and the Toronto Blue Jays starting to heat up again too. Offensively, they're strong. Way outside to Volpe, 1 0. There's a strike. this up. Here's Trevino outside crowd chanting Volpe. Six home runs 17 ribbies and there's a strike. Again, Michael, I mean, we've talked about it. The Yankees have had a ton of success against the J or the Rays uh, bullpen. And came into this series one of the better ones in the in the all of baseball. Well, he stayed in there well on that. A breaking ball. Never gave in. Big home run. Two and two. Kelly now please with the outcome. Volpe has three home runs in the last five games at three in his first 37. Get more comfortable. Soft ground ball to second base. Lau is there and that'll do it. But now we take a one run game into the ninth inning. That's what these two teams play. Heavyweight matches. The latest blow off the bat of the youngster Anthony Volpe. A two run shot. It's 8 7 Tampa Bay. Game tips off. Yes, in the Yes app. Or your home to us as epic season unfold. Opening weekend coverage begins Friday on My Nine, and the home opener is next Sunday on Yes. Both games can be streamed on the Yes app. Another Donnybrook, 8 7 as we go to the ninth inning. 8 9 and 0, leading 7 12 and 2. Ron Marinaccio takes over. And there's a strike. Well, 
Well, Marinaccio has allowed two runs in both of his last two games. He had allowed four runs total in the first 14 games. 0 oh and 2. This yes, be a good outing for him to get back on track. Give the Yankees an opportunity to pick up that run and extend this game in the ninth. Want to look ahead to who's coming up? Nine, one, and two. Cabrera, Torres, and Judge. The 0 2 to Lau. Upstairs. Lau has a couple of ribbies. One for two, sack fly, and a walk. Also a run scored. Swing and a miss. Lau down on strikes. Well, there's a good change up. You see the sinking action and how it ends up outside the strike zone. You pick it up as a hitter right from the release point. Looks like a good pitch to hit and then just disappears outside the strike zone. One oh on a Rosarena. Two and oh Rosarena sack fly on the great diving play. The base is loaded in left center field by Harrison Bader. Well, Rosarena's thirty fifth ribby. Two and one. Good sweeper. Yeah, really good break there, and obviously you need a pitch like that down in the count to a Rosarina. Talked about him leading the league and hitting coming in at 329. Two and two on a Rosarina. Five of the six games have been decided by one run this season. The only one that wasn't was the Thursday game here where the Rays won 8-2. Strike three, a Rosarena down looking. Wow, what a great sequence. I mean, a Rosarena, we talked about how good he is at fastballs, but after a good sweeper and at a changeup, fastball locks him up, just gets the outside corner, if any. But a big out for Marinaccio. So two strikeouts, and here is Josh Lowe. Eight seven, Rays lead. Sweeper misses outside. They'll turn to Jason Adam to try to get the final three outs. Fastball right by him, one and one. Judd's third up in the inning. Two and one on Joslo. 0 for three with a walk and a run scored. A couple of strikeouts. Ground ball a second. Glaber Torres right there. And Marinaccio works a one, two, three inning. Do the Yankees ever rally in their bones? Cabrera, Torres, and then this guy coming up. Can they walk it off in the Bronx? They're down 8-7. Stay tuned to find out. On the clubhouse plus Aaron Boone on the manager's report. And look ahead to the series of the Blue Jays. The four-game set starts tomorrow. Also, check out and follow Yes Network on TikTok for more content. We've got a lot of content in this four game set. Let's see if you can get more in the bottom of the ninth inning. Tampa Bay Rays turned to Jason Adam. Anthony Rizzo hit the eventual game winning home run off him on Friday. So 18 games.
This will be for Adam. And they've played 42, so they've used him an awful lot. 1.69 ERA, 20 strikeouts in 16 innings. I'm going to ask you a little question here, Michael. So they're off to an unbelievable start. Right? Mm -hmm. He leads the Rays in saves. Unless you peeked at the graphic. What, how many do you think he has? I peeked at the graphic. Four or six. Four. Yep. Fairbanks has three and then a bunch of guys with one. And, you know, we talked about the run differential. They're usually beating people up. So team leader in saves with four. Here's Cabrera upstairs, 1 and 0. Can the Yankees come back once again? They're trailing by one. 7, 12, and 2, trailing 8, 9, and 0. Oh. Soft ground ball to second base. Lau gets Cabrera for the first out. So one down, and that's going to bring up Glaber Torres. Glaber came off the bench, pinch hit in the seventh inning, picked up a single of center field. was a big hit at the time. It gave Aaron Judge an opportunity to drive in a run and another big at bat here. Uh, you get on base, then, uh, you know, Aaron Judge, there's really no wiggle room because uh, then you got Rizzo behind him. That almost hit Glaber. Got out of the way of the sweeper. 1 0. Fly ball, shallow left field. The Rosarena comes on to make the play. Two away, and that will leave it up to the captain, Aaron Judge. Judge with an RBI single in the seventh inning. Two home runs yesterday. If you're at him, you, you don't want to just pitch around Judge because then you got Rizzo who's hot with an opportunity to put this game away. High fly ball, deep left center. Siri back on the track in front of the wall, makes the play, and the Rays hold on and win it 8 7. Almost, Paul. Almost. No doubt about it. And Aaron Judge looked over at Adam and kind of tipped his cap. I thought off the bat he had him. Not very often does Aaron Judge go to the warning track. And look at Adam, his reaction. He thought it was way gone. But then afterwards, Aaron Judge kind of looked over. Yep, I just missed it. Adam thought it was a tie game. Took a peek. And said, wow, to his catcher. Another wow. That's when Judge tipped his cap. Well, he got a pitch, and Aaron Judge just missed it. In his mind, he's thinking, maybe, maybe. Obviously, if he gets it all, there's no thought about it. Travis Chapman was trying to wave it out. Just fell short. What a series. Yankees in the race split four. We'll come back to wrap things up.